All right, Skip. So now we have our spiritually discerned mission and our core values that we talked about that we get by pressing those why questions. Once you have that, how do we begin to change lives and, and do the work of ministry? You know, whether you talk uh, and read the business scholars or again, the scholars and authors in youth ministry, you get the same lament. Actually, we have an awful lot of folks who have no mission statement, no vision or purpose or value statement. But this has been a subject of conversation since Collins and Porras first published in 1996 and Fields and Rick Warren published in 1996 and 7 and 98. So actually we now have hundreds of mission statements that have been created. But what happens with mission statements in businesses and in churches? I got the mission statement, I put it in the annual report, I gave it to the committee, and I put it in my top drawer never to be seen again. It must be obvious that a mission statement that just sits in your top drawer changes and guides no program, transforms no souls. The reason we do this is not to fulfill a job description, not to say we have a mission statement, not even just to have a mission statement that will guide goals and objectives. The reason you have a mission statement is that if you have correctly identified your ultimate purpose, your core values, and your most audacious aspirations, what Collins calls, a, in good to great, a BHAG, big, hairy aspiration and audacious goal. Once you have those, the reason is not just to drive it into your articulations, it's to drive it into your culture, to let that clarity and excitement and challenge begin to transform the very culture itself, because it's culture that changes people, mm -hmm. not, just, not just activities or announcements. And if you want to get from your mission statement to your culture, you need to, you need to be relentless about it. Mm -hmm. So that means you have to articulate it clearly everywhere. You need to communicate it. It needs, yes, needs to be in the end report. Yes, it needs to be in the brochure that describes your programming. Yes, it needs to be in the bulletin. Yes, it needs to be on the website. Yes, it needs to be announced to the kids, but beyond that, it needs to be announced over and over and over again. Now, Jack mm -hmm. Welch doesn't get quoted a lot at Divinity Schools, the former chairman of GE. But he said the job of a leader is to clearly articulate, passionately advocate, and then relentlessly, relentlessly, relentlessly drive a vision and a mission into completion. He used to wear people out with his articulations and relentless repetition of the GE vision statement. We need to be as relentless in our communications as GE was with their mission statement. Then you need to recruit around it. And here's the key that, uh, that all the authors uh, agree on. You can't go out and recruit people that you think you can talk into having a passion for your mission statement. You can't impose passion. You can't throw passion into somebody's head like a brick. All you can do is find folks who respond to your articulated passion because they are naturally passionate about the same thing. So it goes into your recruiting to find people whose vision aligns with the vision of your com faith community and your youth ministry. Then you've got to train. This notion of passing out a brochure that happens to have the mission statement or talking about it one meeting a year is never going to get you home. You've got to train upon it in the recruiting process, in the orientation process, and diving down with your staff to what are the theological and scriptural warrants for it so they understand the rationale, not just the verbiage. Mm -hmm. You need to share it with your kids and your parents. You know, at my church we used to have a parents' night. If the parents really want the kids going on the mission trip and the ski trip and all the rest, you know what, give us a night. Give us a night. It's a required precondition to participation where we can talk to you about our passion. We care about this passionately. This is, this is why we get up in the morning. There's a vision for how your kids can be healthy and have flourishing lives as disciples of Christ that is worth fighting for and working for. We want you to be part of this. So you share the vision statement with the parents until the entire community knows. Your senior pastor should know it. All your staff members should know it. Your parents should know it. Your kids should know it. And if possible, they should be able to recite it because it then becomes a prism through which you can see what's going on through the year, and through which you can interpret your experiences. And finally, you need to drive it through your program. If the mission statement sits here and your program planning sits there and they don't meet, you're not going to transform the culture. You've got to hold that mission statement up as the grid against which you decide what will we do and what will we not do. What's important in our programming? How shall we communicate our programming? How shall we sponsor our programming so that you're driving mission through program to culture?